Good afternoon, guys. Uh, before we get going, um, I think I'd be remiss without saying congratulations to both Coach Mitty um, and Coach Tang. I know that uh, the season was not uh, not necessarily uh, uh, just a, a complete linear, um, just uh, all greatness, but uh, both of them created great memories, um, had some great wins, and uh, excited about both those coaches in the future. And uh, also really cool for uh, Coach Hughes, you know, to uh, be number one in the Big 12. So um, just wanted to uh, congratulate them on great seasons and uh, also wish continued best to uh, Coach Hughes and give you guys a little bit of an update on where we're at in spring ball. Um, finished practice six yesterday. And uh, it's interesting as we have made some um, some changes to the offense of where you do see some of those growth uh, pains. You know, where I say growth pains is where it's it's uh, there's been some ups and there's been some some downs. And uh, with the youth of our football team, I think that's to be expected. And continuing to reiterate the message to the guys that those down times can be very beneficial if we handle them the right way, if we grow from them, if we learn from them. And uh, just really excited about uh, uh, where, this, uh, where this progression is going. And it's not all, uh, all uh, rainbows and unicorns at all, the, at all times. Um, but, uh, but I'm very pleased with where we're at. So uh, with that, um, just very briefly, I'll open up to you guys. Connor, when you say uh, progression, can you kind of expand upon the, the progress you've been able to make so far? Yeah, when you look at progression is we have to look and still recognize that we do have some youth at particular positions. Um, and it's with that youth coupled with um, some new aspects to our offense, you're going to see some real highs and then you're going to see some, you know, what the heck are we doing? But that's the purpose of spring ball, and that's the purpose of practice. And without those, what the heck are we doing? Um, are we going to truly find out about ourselves? So when you look at that progression, it's, it's growth is never linear. You know, there's going to be some, some positives, positives, and then maybe we plateau, and then maybe take a little bit of a step back. Um, and, and then you see a little bit more growth. And, and that's what that graph is going to continue to look like. And with the youth, it's ensuring that uh, when we do have a little bit of those lows, that you don't get too frustrated and you continue to move forward. And um, right now, that's what I see us doing. So that's what is exciting about this progression. Sticking with that same vein of, of progress, uh, could you speak to the quarterback position and just what you've seen there? Yeah, it's what you'd expect. It's a dynamic competitive athlete uh, with Avery, who is completely invested. I've seen him um, probably more over the last two months than I've seen my wife. And uh, it just goes to show um, his desire to continue to grow, his desire to continue to learn. Um, you know, one person who I've been really pleased with his growth over the past two months and how we've challenged him is Jacob Knuth. And he made a couple decisions the other day, a couple throws the other day um, that that offensively are the things that uh, we recruited a few years ago. So um, just really, really excited about those two at the quarterback position. You've had a lot of continuity at the center position. Can you talk about the progression uh, moving forward with that, uh, the components available to you? Yeah, right now at the center position, we have um, obviously Sam Hecht, who I'm very, very excited about. Um, excuse me. And we've also been working Hadley Panzer at center, who's done a phenomenal job. And we also have a young uh, walk-on in Michael Capria, who uh, just his progression, his physicality, and what I've been challenging with his leadership um, has been phenomenal. Uh, one of our... I still call him a high school senior, and Kyle Rockers is progressing very, very fast. He's an extremely smart football player. Uh, he's, he's learning how we practice. He's learning the speed of the college game. 
and how things can quickly change. But for a young man after six practices who's never played center before in his career, um, I'm, I'm very pleased. And, you know, to that point, I can't tell you the last time that I had a center play for uh, play for our old line, whether that's at Kansas State or a previous stop, who was a center. So his progression is uh, is going along very well as well. What's your outlook on the running back room? Obviously, DJ returns for you and carries a lot of experience with him. But beyond that and uh, what things look like? Yeah, let me talk real quick on DJ. Um, you know, I think I saw briefly some of the quotes that uh, Coach Malone <laughs> said the other day. His development from – and you can go back to a year ago. You can go back to uh, maybe um, really targeting a Central Florida game. Um, and his progression throughout the season to the type of player that you guys saw in the bowl game this past year is uh, impressive, um, to say the least. But uh, I just could not be more excited about the type of young man and the type of player he is. Um, I know one of the things Coach Anderson is doing a great job with and what we're challenging him to do is, is in some of his route running. And having seen some of that over the course of the first six practices gets very exciting. Um, in behind him, you know, when you look at Joe, and, and he's still – he's got ability. He's got quite a bit of ability. And he's got that – he's got that it factor because he is a competitor. Um, he's still young, so there's still going to be some mistakes. But you look at his toughness um, and how he's continuing to come along, I, I just couldn't be – I, I'm very, very excited about what his future is and what his involvement is this upcoming fall is going to really depend on what transpires between now and next season. Um, and, you know, there's, you know, Jimmy White and uh, Evan Cantu and both those guys have both flashed um, uh, with some, some real positives. So I'm excited where that room is. Obviously, uh, uh, young Rice, Mon Rice is is he's still learning, he's swimming, and you know it's a little bit of encouraging him to to keep soaking up that water fountain that or excuse me that fire hose that is spraying him in the face and just just take a little bit at a time every day. Connor, it struck me as interesting with DJ, given all he's already accomplished, he might be a guy that you would maybe sit during the spring or not give the ball to a whole lot, let some other guys take a chance, but. In practice, at least when we've watched, he's been handling a lot. What's what's the thought process there? Is he just the type of player who can handle that, or why why uh, you know let him go full reign? Yeah, and that's that's a discussion probably better with with Coach Kleiman. Um, I will tell you this: that we are uh, managing his reps, and I know that you guys are typically there at the beginning of practice, and um, I'm gonna kind of comment on two things relative to that. Uh, I think DJ would admit that there are still some things that he needs to continue to work, um, although he is what I would consider to be one of the best in the country at that particular position. And also with that as well is, um, you know, we look back at this past year, and I know I visited on it before, but we were one in four in one-score games, and that's one thing that really sticks with me. It's one thing that I've mentioned to the offense. It's something I've talked to the uh, offensive line about. And if you look at the differences between this past year and maybe in 2022 in those one-score games, I don't know the exact statistics in 2022. It's, it's about having that grit. It's about having that, that want to, that scrappiness that I think um, is a big positive for Kansas State. And for DJ to go out and practice every single day, it's not only him working his craft, but there's a lot of eyes on him. And I'm not talking about um, necessarily you guys in the media. I'm talking about guys in our locker room and the importance that it is to go out and practice and the importance that it is to go out and compete, the importance that even though he is that type of player, and if you have any football sense at all, you know that for our guys. Um, but he's still going out there and doing that is it, something that's pretty important. But along with that, we are ensuring that uh, um, throughout a course of practice that, uh, that his reps are uh, minimized. When you're spending all this time with Avery, 
Um, what, what are you guys talking about? Like, what's the main thing he's harping Well, on I know he spent quite a bit of time with Coach Wells, and it's talking about offense. It's talking about, you know, he'll come up and, and visit with Coach Kleiman about defensive perspective. He'll come up and talk about protections. He'll come up and talk about some of the new things that we're doing. What are the reads? What are the things that he's seeing? Um, it's from a technique. It's from schematics to what we're doing. And then it's from, um, you know, analyzing the defense. It's, it's, the guy's a football junkie. He really is. And we all know what kind of athlete. We all know what type of young man he is. But he loves the game of football. He really does. And he loves learning so much about the game of football and you're seeing it and he's a quick learner so um i i really commend him on his commitment to uh um what we constitute as the unrequired one more for you what's your stance on continuing to signal the uh play calls in next year like you always have or maybe going to a helmet system if that's uh allowed. yeah we're navigating that process right now um i know coach wells and myself have talked to a few NFL coaches. Um, and what we're looking at are what are some of the issues that they have encountered. Uh, the guys that we've targeted have both co uh, called offense um, at the college level and at the NFL level. And we are looking at what is going to be the best method for us. We will use the component of the, uh, um, I guess, the, the radio communication with a quarterback. Um, I can't say that we have the exact plan um, as it stands right now after six practices. Uh, I believe we've used it probably um, coming back after spring break four times. And we'll see how that continues to evolve. Our plan is that about 98% of our procedural operations from sideline to the field is going to be in place by the end of spring football. How have, excuse me, how have some of the, the younger offensive linemen handled kind of the, the leadership void left by, by all those seniors that, that graduated? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question because we did have such phenomenal leadership. And it's a process. It's, it's allowing them to have their own personalities kind of take over that room. It's one of the things that's – that's been uh, most exciting to see. And you really are, you're seeing it with Andrew Line Gang. You're seeing Carver Willis step up. You're seeing Hadley Panzer is a phenomenal leader for us. You're seeing Taylor Poitier, who's been, been around here quite some time. He's kind of the old man of the group now. He's inherited a little bit of that. But it's about them continuing to be themselves and not trying to be Noah Johnson not trying to be Hayden Gillum or Katori Leviston. It's about them developing their own leadership skills, um, but at the same time becoming a leader who's going to impact somebody else, not getting into this, well, I'm just going to lead by example. And we've had that conversation, well, I'm going to lead by example. That kind of comes off, quite honestly, as a little bit selfish because I'm going to lead by example. Well, then, hell, you're only looking at yourself. But how can you positively impact somebody? And is that in a way of challenging them? Is that in a way of putting your arm around them? Is that in a way of saying, for whatever reason, you can't figure this out, me and you are going to go sit down and have a 30-minute extra meeting? Those are the things that we're beginning to see. And um, where we're at as an offensive line, as far as collective as a room, I'm, I'm very much enjoying. And it's not that you're coaching effort. You're not coaching finish. It's about really fine-tuning those things. And it's a testament to the young men in that room. And really, it's a testament to the guys that have come before them as well. And then how, how have you seen that the young group of wide receivers that came in like last season, redshirted, kind of take that next step in, in, in spring practice? And that's – that's one of those that you're seeing some of those highs and lows. And in part because of the different pictures that they're seeing when you get a five safety defense and then you throw in some, some changes to the offense, it's about them continuing to play fast. There's been flashes of their ability 
to make plays, their ability to run routes, their ability to get in and show the toughness and play fast. And then there's some other times where it's going to be that repetition that some of those youth, some of those younger guys are going to need. And, and, and part of it is there's some youth who are working with that first group. And that's where maybe some of the frustration, a young guy, okay, that picture, and then that picture changed post snap. And, and how are they reacting? Are they, they're kind of, you go through this process of learning without getting into it too much, but you know, first you don't know what you don't know, and then you kind of figure it out what you don't know. And then you get into the next process of, okay, well now I do know what I don't know and I know what I got to change. And, and you're thinking as opposed to reacting. And that's a little bit of the stage sometimes that you see with those young guys as they're getting into that next installation period. And, and that's how I look a lot at youth is, okay, they went through it this past fall, all right? Now they're going through it this spring again with some change, all right? Now we're getting into that phase where, all right, man, it's, it's a little bit of paralysis by analysis where you can see them out on the field thinking. And, and what we need to get them to do is to react. And that's, that's not mutually exclusive to the running – or excuse me, to the wide receiver room. That's, that's collectively in the game of football. So that's where these next nine practices are going to be so important. That's where, you know, when they get into captain's practices this summer, they're going to be so important and then getting into fall camp next year. As the uh, new leader of the offense, when someone watches your side of the ball, what do you want their main takeaway to be? The biggest thing that I've communicated to our guys is control the controllables. So when they watch our offense, what I want them to see is a disciplined team. I want to see a team that really plays their ass off and plays their ass off for one another. I want to see a team that executes at an extremely high level. I want to see a team that's going to be extremely physical and physical at all points of attack. And then ultimately, we want to be explosive and efficient. And if you say that's kind of what you would say about our offense that we're going to have without getting into much of the schematics, if you say those things about our offense, I know that we're going to win a whole hell of a lot of ball games. As the offensive coach, who are some defensive players this spring that have been kind of a pain in the butt for you guys? Gosh, you know, where do you start? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, Toby in his transition is probably one that, that you just see him continue to grow and get better every single day. Um, you know, you can go down the list of probably the ones who – who uh, uh, are pretty – Siegel's a, just a phenomenal football player. Um, you know, you get to Jacob Parrish, and, and he's really good. And, and, you know, another old guy, Stuff will Bean, you know, we were joking yesterday with one of our, our, our tackles. I said, that kid's a lot stronger than he looks now. You know, old, old, the old Bean, he's got, uh, he, he's got a little bit heavier hands than you'd anticipate. Um, you know, and I'm probably focusing a little bit more on guys within that core – um, but uh, you, Damien is, is just an impressive, impressive football player. He really is. Big Dame does, does, does a phenomenal, phenomenal job on it. Um, you see Austin Romaine continuing to get better. Um, you know, our young defensive ends, I'm sitting there going, gosh, there's, there's some guys who are flashing and, and just how they complement one another from a physicality, from a quickness standpoint. All three of those guys – um, are just doing a great job. And um, uh, I, I just – you can kind of see some of those guys flashing um, from time to time. But there's some youth on that side of the ball right now as well. And, and I'm sure that they'd say the same things of some ups and downs as it goes through it. And I'm kind of putting me on the spot with that. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out. But I know I'm really excited about that side of the football as well. You're into the heart of spring practice now. What has Matt Wells brought to the, your side of the ball? Well, he's brought a he's brought a ton of ideas and a ton of information of me seeing it and us seeing it from a different quarterback perspective. So a lot of the nuance uh, things that we are doing that may be different are are some things that Coach Wells has brought to the table. Um, 
you know, one of the things I had a conversation with and in, in leaning on his experience from a quarterback's coach, from a coordinator to a head coach is continuing to have a little bit different of a perspective, maybe that 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 thousand yard perspective of the whole thing and and challenging myself and challenging other coaches to maybe see some things, some different ways that we've been kind of stuck in our own way and challenge us to get out of our comfort zone. So um, just been a tremendous amount of support to me as I take on this new role as well um, from um, seeing it this way to, to encouragement to saying, okay, hey, maybe we need to take a little bit different perspective because I'm, I'm learning and growing as well. And, and I'll be the first to admit that uh, as a leader is that, you know, it, it isn't just wide receivers or O-line or running backs who've made some mistakes over the past six, six practices. I, too, have made some mistakes. So um, getting his perspective has just been – you can't measure how, uh, how valuable that's been. Ben Sennett was so important to this offense for, you know, and these guys started to design stuff for Ben. Uh, is that something, from what we've seen, it looks like something the tight ends will continue, but how important is that for the offense? It's extremely important to the offense, and, and as we get in and recruit tight ends and talk about that particular position, to me it's one of the things that makes our offense unique um, across the landscape of college football is – the versatility that we can do with the tight ends. And I appreciate you bringing them up because Ben Sennett, you know, I think I read something the other day that said, gosh, he may be the number two tight end in this year's draft. I, you know, whether or not that's true, I know um, he was a hell of a player for us here at Kansas State. And as we get into the spring, we do have some youth at that tight end position. And uh, Will Swanson has done a phenomenal job and seeing him continue to grow and, and take over some leadership responsibilities. Um, I think you guys know how I feel about Garrett Oakley. Uh, I've talked so much about that. Um, but uh, uh, another young man who's really in just probably maybe the convenience of the timing, I thought he had a great practice yesterday, was Braden Lofton. And you, you look at Braden and his progression and, and the challenge for um, for him and then our two pups in that room as well and their continued growth. And you're seeing those guys begin to, to play a little bit faster. That tight end position in our offense is not an easy position to learn. In fact, I, I've, I've coached that position in this offense if you go back to 2013. And since that time, I've often said that is the most challenging position next to quarterback for us to know, but that versatility with that position that we do plan on continuing to evolve within our offense is what does make us unique. Finally, what, what do you look for when seeking a player that might be a center for your offense? A center? Yeah. Okay. Um, first, it has to be somebody who's smart. Uh, you know, the center position, because you're not necessarily out on the edge. You may not need some of the length. And when I talk about length, we often think about height, but I look at the arm length. Um, you need to have somebody who has the ability to communicate because our communication from an offensive line standpoint starts from the inside and works back out is how we handle that. Um, you have to have somebody who's got some grit and some physicality in them. And, and then with our offense and how – we want to do some things with the athleticism of the offensive line and pulling. They have to be athletic. They have to have the ability to play out in space. If they can't play out in space, it very much limits the things that we can do offensively. And right now, uh, um, we're, not, we're not looking to create limitations. We're looking to create, um, uh, expand upon uh, where we've been thus far. <clears throat> yeah, the center position being an example. You, I know in the spring you work a lot on versatility with the offensive linemen. And uh, also, what what's the balance, though, now when you're breaking in some new guys and trying to get continuity at that position and at, at the set positions and also trying to find where people fit best and get work for the younger guys. Yeah, and that's kind of the the matrix it is as an offensive line coach, especially when your numbers aren't as heavier in spring ball. So, yeah, I want to get continuity, but I also want to get challenge. 
And what I mean by challenge is, okay, maybe maybe Bubba feels real good playing next to Carver Willis. Well, how does Bubba feel playing next to John Pastore? And, you know, and, and there's a prime example with Andrew Leingang. Here's a guy who, unbeknownst maybe to you guys, he's played every single position across the offensive line. And there is that balance of finding that continuity from an offensive line coach. But the way that I want to teach, guys, is I don't want to teach, hey, the left tackle on – this play is doing this assignment. Let's teach it conceptually. And when they do play multiple positions, it is going to add value to our offense, which adds value to this football team. It's going to give them more opportunity. I tell recruits this all the time. You are going to play multiple positions because you need to learn to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And it is pretty uncomfortable. You know, there's sometimes a guy goes down and, and okay, I've been working all my indie. I've been working the first five practices on the left side. You need to get your rear end over to the right side. Okay, well, let's figure out how you're going to handle that. And then ultimately, it gives me a good measurement of conceptually with what we are doing offensively, how well do they understand the scheme? Okay, not what is the left tackle doing, but what are we doing as an offense? And then the balance becomes getting into that continuity. So, when you have limited numbers in the in the spring, continuity is not, I'll be honest with you guys, and maybe people will say I'm terrible for this, is not at the priority of that. It is to your point of figuring out where the best guys are going to fit. Because at the end of the day, I tell them all, my job is to find the best five out there. Hopefully we can get to seven, like I think we had a year ago. I'd love to get to eight, okay, where we can rotate some guys in there. That's a philosophy for us. You know, we lose these offensive linemen from a year ago and everybody thinks the sky's falling and what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, that's what we've been preparing for. And I have to remind some people sometimes in 2021, okay, we lost a pretty damn good center in Noah Johnson. We lost two really experienced guards in, in, in Josh Revis and Ben Adler. And then, you know, we had, we had the ability to make some adjustments with the Cooper BBs of what particular position – might fit them best. But that's that's what we have to continue to do to push this program forward. And I apologize about getting long-winded on this. And then ultimately be what Coach Kleiman continues to say, which is not a great football team that goes 10 and 2 or 9 and 3, and then boom, I lay an egg and I'm four and seven, or four and eight, excuse me, or five and seven. Okay, but we're looking to create consistency within a great football program. And we're not going to do that by just saying, hey, man, you get play one position. You know, you, 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 know, you pick the O-line or, let's be honest, most of the time the O-line picked you, okay? So you better start embracing it. I just had a couple real fast. I was curious about what your thoughts would be and how much Drew Little can help you as he comes back. And then secondarily, I was wondering about uh, Dante Cephas and how he's just kind of mm-hmm. – on a day-to-day, I know he's probably swimming a little bit too, but do you feel like he can help you down the road? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I can tell you this. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we wouldn't have brought him in if we didn't think that they are going to be a huge impact. And uh, when the opportunity presented itself um, with Coach Little, who is not only a dear friend of mine, but, you know, Coach Klein is, is an alumni uh, of this place and having an alumni on staff, I, I think, and, and Coach Kleiman thinks is is very beneficial because at how much I love this place, at how much, you know, man, what you sacrifice, I didn't sacrifice nearly as much or, or anything as, as much as the players that have, you know, ha- have kind of bled out on that football field. And Drew is one of those guys. And if I didn't trust him, um, not only in those components, but in our time together and the opportunity presented itself, that the timing was right, uh, he's going to be a huge asset. He's going to be a huge asset for our offense. He's going to be a huge asset for our football program, for this university. And most definitely for me, as as we continue to work this this progression of an offensive line coach and, and coordinator position. When you look at Dante Cephas, he's a guy that, um, you know, we had conversations going back a year ago prior to him uh, going to Penn State um, when uh, when Coach Middleton was here. And, and yes, we do believe that he brings a, a, a dynamic element to this offense. Is he one of these guys who he too 
is going through some of those growth. Yeah, that's and that's part of it. And he's a mature guy that once I know everything is clicking, he has great ability to uh, uh, to help this football team out. Not only in how explosive he is, but the kid is he's physical. Uh, that kid is not scared. I know that, and he's got tremendous hands. So um, I'm really excited about his progression and his involvement as we continue moving forward and, and seeing how, how his role on this offense continues to evolve.